Welcome back, YouTube friends. Northern Colorado Adventures here. I'm Adam, your host, and I just wanted to welcome you back to the channel. It's been a little bit of time since I've done a video. I want to apologize for that. But I did want to say that, you know, one of the things I was thinking about was, you know, I haven't done a video on adventure delivery. In other words, what vehicles do we pick and why do we pick them to get us from point A to point B of our adventure? And so for me today, I wanted to take a little bit of time and tell you about why I picked the 2020 Ford Ranger. So after doing thorough research, exhaustive research, and really not having a lot of uh, better things to do other than to go to work every day because I bought this truck during COVID. I literally bought this truck in summer one, summer number one of COVID restrictions. I went to the dealership and I was basically the only guy, maybe one other family walked in while I was there on like a Friday afternoon. Every single salesperson was just standing there waiting for something to happen. And so this was a perfect time to come in, I felt like, and do a trade-in on my uh, vehicle at the time and kind of look at 0% financing. It was hard to resist. Ford and other manufacturers were not moving a lot of vehicles because the state of hysteria in the world. Um, I was one of the people that just decided to go for it. And so I chose the Ford Ranger based on economy. Cab size was a little bigger than the other mid-sized trucks. A little more shoulder and hip room, which I like. A little more get up and go with the turbocharger. Um, I also like the towing capacity, which was miles better than a lot of the competition. And I'm just kind of a Ford product brand boy. I've always kind of had good luck with Ford vehicles, particularly Ford pickup trucks. I like the size of the bed. The bed was deeper than a lot of the other trucks in the midsize market. And I didn't want a giant touchscreen. I think they're too distracting. I just wanted something a little more minimalistic, and so I chose the Ford Ranger. So there are several features about this vehicle that I just absolutely love. Um, I found the towing capability to be on par with what it was rated at. 7,500 pounds, 1,600 pounds of um, payload capacity. We have a small pop-up camping trailer that fully loaded can weigh up to 3,000 pounds. And this truck just chugs up the hills up the canyons effortlessly. You really don't feel it back there. It's got the adjustable, it's got the tech package that I opted for that has the um, blind spot mirror adjustments for up to three different size trailers, which I found to be accurate. Uh, miles per gallon was another consideration. Uh, I get about 21 miles per gallon in this vehicle, highway and road combined. That was consistent with the high end of what a lot of people were reporting online. I looked at the data on Fuelly, which is a great crowdsourcing website for fuel economy on a variety of vehicles. And looking at the data from 164 different Ranger model, 2020 model year trucks, um, same engine, same everything, same package um, features with over 3 million miles. They're rating it at 19 to 21 miles per gallon. Um, one of the interesting things is that Ford faced a class action suit, which they won in April of 2023 over um, basically allegations that they were misleading buyers about the uh, fuel mileage for the F-150 and the Ranger trucks, which turned out to be a non-issue, very large lawsuit, 1.2 billion. Um, and I found it to be, you know, kind of meeting up what the sticker was telling buyers. I like the visibility of the truck. I like the handling of the truck. I don't think there's much turbo lag. That's the time when you really press on the gas and you're kind of hoping for that turbo to kick in. Really does it pretty quickly. I think they've improved that through the model years. Um, I feel like the maintenance costs of the truck have been relatively low. I have 45,000 miles on this truck. Really haven't done anything outside of an oil change and tire rotation. Um, and that's really nice. Um, these turbocharged four cylinder engines um, are really low maintenance to this point. Uh, I would say that there's no cabin squeaks or creaks. You know, everything feels tight as a drum when you're driving down the highway or down the road or a country road at 45,000 miles. That's impressive. Um, I'm old enough to know what it was like to drive trucks when you put 40, 50,000 miles on them. You start to notice creaks and, and, you know, different kind of like sounds coming out of the vehicle. So that's reassuring. No power or electronic issues. Everything works as it should. All the backup cameras, the heads up display, you know, the small uh, touch screen works great. Uh, it gets a little bit delayed in extreme cold, but I think that's probably just part of all that technology. The HVAC system, a lot of online owners complained that they didn't feel like the AC was cold enough or that the heat was hot enough. I have no problem with it. I find it to be fine. 
nothing amazing about it, but nothing bad about it. I like the FX4 suspension package. I think that was worth it. I noticed that it tends to be really plush when the truck is under a load and it's stiff if you're off-road, which is exactly what you want out of the off-road um, FX4 tuned suspension. Another thing I feel really great about is this paint job. This beautiful lightning blue, man, it looks sharp. It has not lost any of its appearance really in the last three and a half years, four years that I've had the vehicle. Um, would have been four years. Lots of different terrain, lots of different weather. Uh, we use magnesium uh, sulfate on the roads here in Colorado. It's held up great. No paint chips or flakes or anything like that. All right, so I want to talk about the Ranger truck a little more in detail. Some of the things that I love about it. Number one, mileage. Love the mileage on this truck versus the F-150, which I really consider to be the elite truck in the full-size category. If you're thinking about getting a full-size, the F-150's up there. And um, for mid-size trucks, you got options, but the best mileage short of getting the Echo diesel option in any of those trucks is the Ranger 2.3, and I just happen to find it very, very effective. I get about, I'm looking at about 22 miles per gallon. I've got stock wheels and tires, and um, pulls really well. You can tow a trailer with it. You can tow other toys with it. Towing capacity leads to my next uh, favorite thing about the Ranger is best-in-class towing capacity. You're talking about 7,000 pounds of towing um on a mid-sized truck that's pretty good um the next competitive mid-sized truck i consider to be the tacoma comes in for this model year at 5,000 pounds so that's a big discrepancy there's probably a little wiggle room it's probably a little less than 7,000, but um i'm sure there's somebody that was just kind of plunking on just a little more weight and got it to 7,000, but I've been towing a 3,500 pound uh, pop-up trailer with this up canyons. It just chugs along. I've got a full bed. I've got bikes on the rack above the bed. Um, I've got a full cab. Got the fam in here. Got a dog or two. Um, and no problem at all. Effortless. The turbo kicks in when it needs to. Otherwise, it'll chug along around 1,500 RPMs if things are level. Just kind of cruising along. Uh, mileage does of course drop down to probably 15 to 16 uh, miles per gallon towing but I mean for the number of times I do that versus the number of times I'm driving it in traffic I'll take it. Other thing I love here is the comfort. So if you look at the dimensions of the different mid-sized trucks right you're looking at things like the Colorado you know the Sierra the Tacoma things like this the Nissan uh whatever they come out with for that model year this is 20 remember it's a 2020 this has the biggest of the cabs so in other words the hip width is a little more the shoulder width is a little more the head height is a little more um and i can appreciate that i'm six feet tall 210 pounds and i notice it i've driven other trucks i test drove other trucks and uh really scoped them out on the internet and you got to have a way to move around so this is a great option if you're looking for that truck that's sort of between maybe your previous midsize and then your full size the ranger is the closest to being dead set middle between a cab size that's like the tacoma and then more like the tundra you know it's something that is just short of f-150 with a little bit more room than a midsize than you would think and that's been nice Other thoughts, I love the bed of this truck. So if you're looking at the trucks that came out same model year, the depth of the bed and the materials are the two things you need to think about. Number one, the Tacoma that year had a synthetic polymer they were making the bed out of. And um, not just the Tacoma, but the other mid-sized trucks, the bed was shallower. So in other words, it's an easy reach over the uh, fenders of the truck to get stuff out of the bed. But I always think about how much stuff can I get in the bed? I need a deeper bed and I want one that's made out of 
aluminum or alloy or steel. I don't want something made out of plastic. So uh, that's something that the Ranger had above all the other trucks was bed size. Even with this quad cab setup where I've got the four doors, um, of course it doesn't matter on bed depth, they're gonna put the same bed on, it's just the length that changes. But I do appreciate the depth of the bed and able to, in order to hold more stuff going camping, taking the family uh, on a picnic, on a hike, going fishing, things like that. All right, the first spot where Ford missed. Tailgate dampeners. This is a $25 to $30 part online. It takes about 10 minutes to install and a couple of common wrenches. And Ford couldn't put it on an FX4 packaged XLT. These days, Ford, Everyone likes tailgate dampeners. Let's talk about what everyone loves in their cab or their car or truck. USB chargers and having them within easy range. And this was a miss. I think Ford missed on this one. So here's the driver's seat. And here's the very bottom behind all the controls are the USB ports. Now, if you have anything in here, I have some chapstick because this is Colorado and it gets windy. You got to reach through all this stuff, reach way down in here, and hopefully you hit this just right to plug that USB in, and you know what I'm talking about. Um, I feel like this was a huge miss. A lot of these buttons up here I rarely use. I just use the touchscreen controls. So I feel like, you know, for maybe an extra a couple hundred bucks, Ford could have moved the USB up here and emphasized their touchscreen, which has been great. These are lifetime warranty weather mats. Ford wanted four to $500 for these for a full set. You can get them on eBay with recycled uh, rubber and plastic composite for about 150, 175. Again, don't buy the all weather mats from Ford. There are many options for less. Next thing is the back seat, very comfy. Some people took issue with the fact that this does not fold all the way down. These headrests do not come out. They do not pivot to fold down so that the top can go down to meet the bottom of the bench and you can fill this cab in the back with items. So kind of an awkward design. Haven't run into an issue with it, um, but I gotta admit it would have been better if Ford would have put some kind of a joint here where these could push button fold down and this folds down on top of the back seat. Underneath, good storage. Got some compartments here, and I've seen some videos online where people have taken this compartment and put an eight inch subwoofer, uh, subwoofer speaker in here. That's a nice touch. Let's talk about these stock tires, the Hankook Dynapro ATM. So these are rated at 50,000 miles uh, for their warranty and I have to say they're very quiet on the highway and they give you some mild traction you know, in dirt or um, off-road. They've gotten great mileage. Um, they're wearing down to the point where I think I'm going to replace them with something more aggressive. Uh, the largest stock tire you can put on the Ranger without having to do a lift or a leveling kit is probably 265.70. If you wanted to go bigger than that, you might have to make some adjustments and there's other videos on that I'll try to find and put in the about, but these tires are really a big nothing burger. I mean, Ford, for an FX4 package, could have really put something, how about a, how about like a, uh, a Wrangler, you know? How about something that's got some bite? You know, something that's just a little more off-road oriented than these, uh, you know, very basic ones from Korea. Let's take a look under the hood. A little dusty here. Another small complaint. Um, on the XLT, even with the FX4 package, this should have a cover piece that says Ford Ranger on it that looks very cool. And Ford skimped on this. You can see where it attaches uh, to the top of the engine block. They skimped on this because I was told by a dealer that I did not order the Lariat. So for a $42,000 truck, they skimped on what amounts to probably a $2 piece of plastic that's got a cool badge on it. 
The upside is you can access oil and fluid check, but the downside is it's not hard to replace and it actually looks pretty cool. So thanks a lot, Ford. Okay, I did add a couple of fun aftermarket parts to the Ranger, specifically a bed cover. I didn't want the fold away, I wanted the roll away, the ones that roll into a canister at the, um, the front of the bed near the cab. So I went with a Retrax system. Retrax is a great company that makes everything in North Dakota, and that was about $1,200. Uh, very easy to install. My neighbor and I put it on in about an hour. Very easy. The second thing that we uh, decided to put on it was a Rhino Rack. This is the Rhino Rack Vortex crossbar system that can hold uh, three to four bikes. Also a couple of kayaks or canoes. This was $450 and is compatible with the Retrax system for the bed cover. And finally, the bike racks were made by Rocky Mountain. They were kind of the only thing left available uh, during COVID. Remember, all of these aftermarket things were purchased in 2020 in the summer, which was the summer where everyone was kind of starting to lose their mind and go camping. And so everything was on shortage. But Rocky Mountain systems were available. These are called the brass knuckles by the uh, name of the same device that we use where we run our fingers through them. Um, we kind of do the same thing with the moving the lever down over the front end of the bike to attach it uh, safely to the rack. They built it to look like a brass knuckle system. These were $700, and frankly, everything is held up really well. We use it all the time. Well, that does it for me today. I just wanted to say thank you for stopping by. I hope this was informative. I think these mid-sized trucks are really the future. I think we live in a world where the full-size trucks bring a lot of baggage with them in all kinds of ways, not just getting in the garage, but also from an uh, eco-friendly standpoint and just kind of realizing we might need to right-size our own needs when we buy these vehicles. Um, I've spent a lot of time researching these trucks. I'm very happy with my choice. I'd love to hear more about your choice and what you've chosen. If you've looked at mid-sized trucks, how has it gone? Drop a line in the comments. Be safe out there and enjoy the next great adventure. See you later.